Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, 2019, April 2nd, Mets at Miami, 4th Street Baseball. Let's do this. We're in the top of the 7th inning. Score is 4-1, to one, Marlins. And we're going to have Rosario coming up. It's going to be Rosario Ligaris and probably a pinch hitter for the pitcher because uh, he's gone 6 complete already. And it's going to be Jose Reina still in there. Now, Jose Reina has gone 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And he can go 25. So we're going to try to get him through the inning, see what happens. And here are the cards. Uh, you're basically look, starting off looking at here, at the matchup, and see where the ball is hit. Is it uh, hit to the pitcher, the catcher, uh, an infielder, an outfielder? So let's roll five dice. You roll 2d10. 2d6 and 1d20. All right, and we read, and we can't see those. There we go. Now we can see them. 57. So he's a righty batter. All right, he's a righty batter right there. Bats right. So then we look at the matchup versus righties, and it's going to be a 57, and a 57 turns into a, a matchup versus the pitcher. So we'll, now we have to find out is it a fastball or breaking ball? We'll do that secondly, depending. Um, he is a right handed batter, so we're looking at a three. On both sides so versus a right-handed pitcher we look at the pitcher column versus pitcher column and uh, and this is not a defensive matchup that that'll be different that would be if I rolled a seven for example a seven or eight would have been a defensive pitcher matchup that means the 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 pitcher is fielding the ball this is a little bit different this is the ability of the pitcher to get the batter out and that's the column here pitcher column the defensive column would would on the pitcher would be down here. See that defense pitcher? You would read it off here. And there's a couple of chances for an error. The four would be a chance for an error. All right, so let's go back to the uh, pitcher column. And that's a 14 on top, right? That's the pitcher number on the batter card versus pitcher number on the batter card. 14 versus a right-handed pitcher. You can see that right there. 14, and you're going to subtract a three versus right-handed pitcher, whether it's fastball or a breaking ball. So it's going to be an 11, and we look at the D20, it's a 17, so the pitcher wins the matchup. So now we're going to have to see which column. Are we throwing a breaking ball or a fastball? And that's done very easily. Um, we just add up the 6 and the 4, that's a 10, and this little chart right here. And this is an easy chart to memorize. It's not there, the 10's not there, it'll be 2 to 6, 11 and 12 would be a fastball, so it's going to be a breaking ball. So the breaking ball, we're going to look at this column for the results. And again, we still use the same 10, and that's going to be a strikeout. 43 is a strikeout. There are two charts that this game uses, and both charts are super easy to memorize. So Rosario strikes out for the first time in the game, which is a good sign. He's flied out the other couple of times. And here comes Juan Ligaris, who's grounded into a double play and struck out. So again, we're going to roll the dice and look for that matchup against a righty, because he is a righty. And we're looking at a 40, uh, you can't see that, there it is, a 49. 49 versus a righty is going to be on the to the right fielder, 47 to 51. You can see that right there is going to be to the right fielder. All right, so we're going to look up the matchup with the right fielder. Who's the right fielder for the Marlins? And that is going to be JT Riddle is out there. So we're going to use this defensive chart for JT Riddle. JT Riddle in right field. Uh, it's a center, but I'm giving him the same in right field. He's a three. So versus right-handed pitcher to the outfield, 14 minus three is an 11. What do we roll on the D20? We rolled a, can't see it, but let me make it so you can. There it is. It's a three. See that? I'm going to move this up just a little bit so I get both things into view. There we go. So that means it's going to be off the batter. The batter wins the matchup versus a right-handed pitcher. Uh, uh, right versus right-handed pitcher. He's going to read off the outfield column because it was hit to the outfield, correct? And then we're going to look at the 2d6, and that adds up to 7. We look at the 7, and that's a 70. But when it falls on a 0, we add the, the, out, the fielder's number. In other words, the right fielder would be a 9, the center fielder would be an 8, the left fielder would be a 7, and so on, the numbers you use for your score sheets. So that's a 79, and a 79 reads. Got a new book today, by the way. Doc Ellis in the Country of Baseball. Love it.
And a 79 is going to be a deep drive to right field. And right there is JT Riddle for the out. All right, it's the pitcher spot, so we're going to bring up a pinch hitter. Hit. Pinch hitter. All right, let's see what happens. So again, we're looking at the matchup versus a right-handed hitter. Now, Reina is pretty much done for the day. He hasn't given up a hit or a walk, so it's okay. Now, it's an 86. So versus a righty, an 86 is going to fall within 52 to 94, which is a pitcher matchup. That could be a base on balls or a strikeout. Versus a right-handed batter, it's a 3. Versus right-handed pitchers, a 14 minus 3 is an 11. We roll the 9. So the batter wins that matchup. And we're going to read it off this column. So it may not be a strikeout or a walk. It could be something else. We're going to look at the 6 and a 4, which is a 10. We go down here to the 10. It's a 55. And a 55 reads that it's a slow grounder to the third baseman. Charging it is Brian Anderson. Fires the first in time to get Davis. And that retires the side. Three up, three down. We go to the seventh inning stretch. 4-1 Marlins. I'm going to bring up Neil Walker to pinch hit. And then we'll have Chen to come in to pitch. All right, for an inning. So here's, uh, got to check the matchup. JT Riddle's a lefty, so we're looking at Familia versus a lefty, and we're looking at the 2D10. It's a 37 versus a lefty, and that tells us falls within 35 to 39 range. It's hit to the left fielder. That's Nimmo. He's a 4. So versus a righty pitcher to the outfield, 13 minus 4 is a 9. We look at the 8, so it's going to be off Riddle to the outfield, and we add the 2D6. It's a 7, and a 7 is going to be a 77, which is a fly to left, one away. Two, two charts, and they're very easy to memorize. So here's a pinch hitter. It's going to be Neil Walker. So Urena's day is over. And we're going to check that matchup against. He's a switch hitter, batting lefty. So we're going to check uh, matchup versus a lefty. That's a 24, and that is going to be 20 to 25. This is going to be the third baseman. Third baseman matchup is McNeil. He's a 5 over there, so this is going to be versus a right-handed pitcher to the infield. 15 minus 5. This is the infield column right here. We're looking at the top only. Uh, 15 minus 5 is a 10. We roll the 4 on the D20, so it's going to be on, off of the batter's card. If it's equal to or less than, it's off the batter's card, so the batter wins it. And it's a 24. And uh, uh, not a 24. We're looking at a the 3 plus the 1. And that is going to be a 4, and that's a 60 plus the third baseman, 65. And that, I believe, is a medium ground. No, it's a uh, hard ground ball to the third baseman. McNeil up with it and throws out Walker for two outs. And here comes Miggy, Miggy Rojas. Miggy Rojas today is 0 for 3, a couple of fly outs and a ground out. Again, we're looking at the matchup. This time it's versus a righty because it's a righty batter. And it's a 57, so we're looking at that matchup. It's going to fall within the pitcher, so we're going to look here versus a righty batter. Uh, we're going to have to see immediately because uh, fastball is a 7, breaking ball is a 5, so he's a plus 2. So we're going to see plus 2. We rolled the 2d6 is a 10, plus 2. Nope, so it's going to be a breaking ball, so we're looking at the 5. 5. 17 minus 5 is 12, and we roll the 7, so it is going to be off of off of the um, batter card pitcher matchup column. And we, we have a 10, and a 10 is going to be a 55, which is, again, a ground ball to third base. Scooping it is McNeil, the high throw, the nice stretch by the first baseman, Dom Smith, and that retires the side. Easy. So let's do it. Let's look at the lefty matchup column. It's right here. And we got a 91 versus a lefty. It's going to be versus the pitcher. That's the last number. It could be versus the pitcher. So we're going to look here. It's going to be a 3 versus a left-handed pitcher. 18 minus 3 is a 15. We roll a 7. Uh, there you go. Well, it's a 1 now. But it's still below, so it's going to be off the batter. 
uh, column against the pitcher, right? It says P right there, so that's how you know. And we're going to look at the 2D6. It's an 8, and it's a strikeout. So Memo swings and misses at a pitch outside the strike zone. And uh, here is Jeff McNeil, another lefty. So Chen versus another lefty. All right, so 94 versus a lefty, and that is going to fall within the park range. Oh, great. This is fun. So uh, this, I'm going to move this out so we can look at the park result and how to use this park chart, which is very cool. Every park has its own chart, its own unique dimensions. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to roll, gonna roll all five dice, and we're going to look off the... So the, basically you're looking at the 83 for the location, right? I guess you can call it the horizontal location. And, uh, and that would fall under M. 83 falls within 80 to 87 range, so that's under M. And then we're going to look at the 15, and we're going to check the power number. First of all, let's look at the 15, see where that ends up, because we may not need the power number. Um, so... Granderson probably has some sort of power number, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, wait a second, who's up? No, it's McNeil who's up, right? McNeil is up. So, uh, so we'll see what kind of power number he has. So the 15 takes us right here to the, what did I say, it was an M? I said, a, yeah, I said it was an M. So that's gonna hit off the wall. Now that's a double and you can stretch it into a triple but uh, we're going to keep it as a double. Don't want to get the I mean, we're down by 3 runs, don't want to get thrown out at this point. So when it's off the wall, see it was off the wall right there. When it's off the wall, this is all the wall, any black wherever it hits black. So it hit on the fifth. Oh wait, the power number. Could be a home run if he has a power number. I forgot to look at that. So his power number versus lefties is a 0. See that? Power 0. Versus righties, it's a one. So that would have been a home run because it would have taken us to 16. It would have been over the fence. See how cool that is? Very simple way. And it's not a complicated thing to, to resolve. It's going to be a double, a one-out double for Jeff McNeil. And up comes Robbie Cano, another lefty. So a lot of lefties here for the, for the Mets coming up. Let's set up our field again so we can roll nice and quietly. That's the nice thing about these fields. They're super stealth. And that's critical when you live in a house with other people. You know, if I play late at night, uh, early in the morning, I don't want to be banging the dice all over the place. All right, it's going to be a 28. We're looking at a matchup versus a lefty, and a 28 is going to be a fall within 25 to 31 range, which is to the shortstop. Shortstop is Rojas. He's a 6. So versus a lefty to the infield, 14 minus 6 is an 8. The D20 is a 10. So it's going to be off Rojas. We roll the D6s, add up to 7. So we're going to look at the uh, Rojas column. There he is. 7 is going to be a hard ground ball to the shortstop. And he throws out. And I'm pretty sure that's a hold. Let me just double check. He's going to check the runner in second. And he's going to hold the 66. 66 was a result. Hard ground ball. Other runners advance one base. So that will, he will advance a base on that. Okay, so we'll let him move. I'll have to check that. Usually, uh, it's only a 40% chance that they move to third on a ball hit to short. All right, hold on a second. Let me, let me take care of my dog. Hold on a second. <sighs> okay. All right, let's continue where we were. Um, Runner on third, Michael Conforto. Did I just roll? Yeah, I just rolled versus the lefty. It's an 18. That's going to be the second base. Second baseman is Starling Castro, so it's chopped to second. It's a 5. He's a 5 versus a lefty infield. Is a 15 minus 5 is a 10. That's going to be off of Starling Castro's card. And we're going to go add up the 2d6. It's a 4 off Starling Castro. 4 off Castro. And that's a 64. 
And that's going to end the inning. The Mets leave a runner, get a hit. No runs, one hit. And it's still 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Doing a 4th Street Baseball tutorial. Pretty straightforward game. You give, you give yourself a chance with it. We're going to get a new pitcher for the Mets. Uh, who do we have? We have a lefty, a righty, and two righties coming up. Let's just double check that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to grab... We're just going to grab somebody here. Seth Lugo. It's a close game, so we'll bring in somebody who's worthwhile. So Seth Lugo's going to come in. Pretty sure you can see that. There we go. All right. So Lugo is pitching versus Granderson. Let's roll. Let's roll the five dice. Two to ten, and we're going to look at the... It's a 98. That's going to be a ballpark again. So we're going to pull, pull the ballpark. And let's check Curtis Granderson versus a righty is a plus one in the power. So that's going to, we're going to add that to whatever our roll is going to be. So... So he's a plus one, I said, so we'll see. We're going to roll again. Let's let me move this out of the way so we can see the full ballpark card. And we're going to roll here. Let's see. All right. Oh, a 15. It makes it a 16. We have 83. Didn't we just roll that? That's weird. All right. We just roll that. That's an M again, but a 16 from memory. It's a 15 plus one for the power on Granderson. And that's going to be over the fence for a home run. So Curtis Granderson strikes back at his X team and makes the score five to one. So Lugo gives up a home run here. And next is going to be Brian Anderson. So basically, you look at the 83, it tells you it's in the M section. And then you look at the 15 plus one for the power on the batter's card was 16. You look here on the side, up to 16, you go across. That's over the fence. This is the fence. So if it would have been hit to K, it wouldn't have gone out of the ballpark. It would have been a double. That's pretty simple, and it's pretty cool because you get a you know a different card for every few, every uh, stadium. It's one thing I really like about it, and it's super. You know, normally it's so complicated to figure out, but not this, not with this game. Pretty simple. All right, so uh, Granderson homers, and here's Brian Anderson. Righty versus righty. We're looking on the right side of the matchup. It's going to be an 11. 11 matchup is 9 to 17 as a second baseman. Second baseman's Cano. He's a 5. So it's going to be 10 field. 16 minus 5. That's infield right there. 16 minus 5 is an 11. We look at the D20. and Oh, wait. We have two D20s. That's weird. Uh, let me get my other. Ah, there it is. Okay. This is my other D6. So it's a 3. So it's going to be off the batter card. The D20 is a 3. That's below whatever I said it was. Uh, it was a 16 minus uh, Cano was a 5, so it was an 11. The 3 is below that. Hold on a second. My dog is something. We're not doing that, lady. No, no. No, no, no. No, no. Alright. She just wants a little attention right now. Alright, so we're going to look off Brian Anderson. It's a 5 plus a 3 versus the infield. That's an 8, and that's a base hit. Brian Anderson singles. He's on it first. So, so far, Lugo, who's a heck of a pitcher, has given up a home run and a single. Let's move this just a little bit to get the cards into the side a little bit better. There we go. All right. So here's Starling Castro. We're going to look at the matchup versus a righty, because he's a righty. We're going to look at the result of the, D, the D10s. The d It's a 35. You read the green first. The 35 is going to fall between 33 and 36, which is left field. Left fielder is four, a Nemo. Versus the outfield of 15 minus 4. You see that outfield right there? 15 minus 4 is an 11. And the 11, we're going to compare it to the D20, which is a 12. So it's going to be off of the outfielder Nimmo. And we got an 8. So Nimmo and an 8. And it's a 98, which is a... It is a medium fly ball to left so Castro flies out one down here's Martin Prado we're in the bottom of the eighth it's a five to one Mets uh, behind so, uh, Marlins lead it's a zero seven here 
Theo is 7 versus Martin Prado. He's a righty. He's 0 7. He's going to fall within the 7 and 8 range. It's to the first baseman. First baseman is Dominic Smith. I didn't bother to look what he is. But Smith is a 4 first base. So let me quickly write that in. It makes my life easier. So he's a 4. So infield versus a righty pitcher. 13 minus 4 is a 9. D20 is a 1. So we're reading off of Prado. We rolled a 8 off of Prado. And that's going to be a base hit. Now we can try to go to third on this with one out. And let's try to do that. Let me check. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's check Brian Anderson's number. Brian Anderson's running number is a 10. It would be plus five if there were two outs. But it's a 10. And then we'd have to check the, um, the outfielder was hit to, it was originally hit to 0, 07, which was the first baseman. So it's a hit to right field. The right fielder Conforto's arm, let's look at what Conforto's arm rating is. His arm rating in Conforto is a 0, so it will be a 10. It's too close. It's 50 50. So I'm going to avoid that. It's going to be first and second with one out. All right. And uh, here comes Jorge Alfaro. Let's see if Lua can get somebody out. Uh, what we need here is a double play. First and second. All right, let's do that. Here's the pitch. We're going for the matchup versus a righty again. It's going to be a 54, and that's going to be to the pitcher. Or a pitcher-batter matchup is what I meant. And it's a plus two. We have a seven. Uh, let's see what the chart is. Plus two and a seven. Still learning these. Yep, it's going to be a fastball. Seth Lugo has a great fastball, so it's a 10 versus a right-handed batter. And then versus a right-handed pitcher, 12. So it's a 2. We roll a 14, so it's going to be off a pitcher. It's probably going to be a strikeout. And the 7 off a pitcher is a strikeout. So when the pitcher wins those matchups, it's probably going to be a strikeout unless he's wild, and then it could be a walk. All right, so it's Lewis Brinson now with two on and two out. Let's roll. Brinson is a righty, so again, we're looking at the matchup on the right side of the pitcher column. And that's going to be a four, and a four is uh, going to be to the pitcher infield. So he it's a ball that's hit to Seth Lugo. So he's a five. To the infield is a 12, so it's a seven. We rolled an 18, so it's going to be off of Lugo here on this column, this fielder column. And it's going to be a four off the fielder column, which is a 51. And that is a ball that's slow ground ball. And Lugo fields it over to first, and that retires the side. So they score a run with the home run, the solo shot by Granderson. They leave a couple. And we go to the top of the ninth, 5-1 to one Marlins. All right, so it's going to be Wilson and Ramos. We can get a new pitcher. What are you doing? What is it? Uh, looks like something she can chew. We're going to allow her to chew up. All right. So, um, all right, here it is. So, Nick Anderson versus Ramos here in the top of the ninth. Five to one, one on the lead. You're watching the tutorial on 4th Street Baseball. Let's see. 35. We're going to check the matchup off the pitcher against a righty. So we're looking at the right side. The 35 falls within the left field, center fielder range. 33 to 37 is going to be the center fielder. Center fielder is a 5, Lewis Brinson. So he hits it to the outfield. 14 minus 5 is a 9. We roll a 2, so it is going to be off of Ramos. We're going to add the 2, the 2d6 is a 7, and that's going to be a base hit. Oh, no. Uh, well, maybe. Wait, it's a 20... I believe I said it was to uh, 35, it was to the center fielder, so it's going to be a 28. A 28 tells us <clears throat> and a 28 is going to be a drive. It's going to split the outfielders and center fielder Riddle plays the carom in right center field. And uh, Ramos is in there with a leadoff double. So Ramos starts us off with a double. And here comes Dominic Smith. 
He's a lefty, so we're going to check the left side now, the left side matchup. Let me straighten these out. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Result of the 2D10. It's a 29. 29 versus a lefty is a 29 to 33 center field again. So center fielder is Brinson. He's a 5. So we're looking at a 5 to the outfield. And the 16 minus 5 is an 11, but we roll a 5, so it will be read off Dominic Smith's card. We're going to add the 2d6. It's a total of a 6. That's going to be a 20. A 28 is back-to-back -back doubles. That's going to score a run. It scores 5 to 3 now. 5 to 2, excuse me. So that's a drive, and that's one hop off the wall. Scoring easily is Ramos. And into second base with an RBI double is Smith. Next up is Ahmed Rosario. And we're going to check the matchup versus a righty. Because Ahmed is a righty. And it's a 58. This is probably going to be a pitcher matchup, and it is a pitcher-batter matchup. So it's a 10. Four, if you look at the pitcher number versus pitcher versus right-handed pitcher, the 14 minus 10 is a 4. We roll a 19. So the pitcher wins this. The 6 is a strikeout. So Rosario strikes out. And next up is Juan Lagares. He's a righty, so we're looking at the righty matchup side. We're looking at the result of a 10. And that's a 31. And a 31 is 30 to 32 is to the left fielder. Left fielder is Granderson. He's a 3. So it's to the outfield. 14 minus 3 is an 11. We roll an 8, so it will be off Lagares' card. We add the 2d6, 4 plus 4. And that is a 70. Uh... I believe we said it was to left field, 31. Yep, so it's a, uh, what did I say it was, a 70, a 73, because we got a uh, 77, because we got to add the left fielder position when the thing is in a zero. And that's going to be a deep fly ball to left field. And nobody's going to tag up or move across on that. All right, we're going to get a pinch hitter. So the Mets are down to the last out, unfortunately. Keon Broxton, I believe, is still with the team, so we're going to have him hit. He ends the season. You can see that he has Baltimore, Seattle, and New York Mets, New York National. So he's a righty. That's all I got right now. So we're looking, uh, oh, a 0-2. That's going to be a power matchup, and he's got good power. So it's going to be a power matchup. We're going to read off the power card directly versus a right-handed pitcher because Anderson's a right-handed pitcher. So we're looking at here at the power matchup, and we're going to look at the, the 2 plus the 6 is an 8, and that is going to be a deep fly to right field to end the ball game. So Broxton flies out, and the ball game is over. Final score, Marlins 5, Mets 2. One run there at the end on two hits. And that's all she wrote. So that's 4th Street Baseball. This is Tony Porter. Thanks for watching.